spread the news to your friends, to your family, to your relations, and to your neighbors again this morning. What God is doing within thy presence, our God has been so faithful. Tell them to subscribe to this platform and also help them to always switch on their notification so that when we are on, it's easy for them to connect with us. I also want to say to you, it will be good for you, for your friends to watch it on their own, than you um, allowing them to, you know, that when you are on, they can be on with you. If you can do that, that would be very, very good because that means they are independent of you and they can watch anytime we are on. Praise the Lord, somebody. I want to thank God for the life of every one of you joining us again this morning. I say God richly bless you for great and mighty things that God is going to do in your life this morning. I welcome you again in Jesus' name to this platform. I also want to exalt the name of the Lord our God for what he's doing in the lives of the people. Up until yesterday night again, testimony, testimony, testimony of healing, of deliverance, of goodness of God. How God has sold himself forth on behalf of the people. Please spread this news. We're going to dedicate time for that testimony, but I'll let you know. So please, you can do us a favor by writing your testimony, what the Lord has done. You can record it in a short form. That is if you want it, you know, to be played. And I promise you, we will play your testimony. You can record it. Just make sure that it's not more than two to three minutes. I will be able to share it with the people. You can also send your email to tell us what the Lord is doing in your life because we want to hear what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. I also want to say a big thank you to our worship team and our media team and to everyone that is sharing this program. I say God richly bless you and reward you to great evangelists in our midst that is spreading this news. You are an evangelist of the word of God. And I say God richly bless you. How are we doing this morning? I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. Let's go again. How are we doing this morning? I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. Let's go one more time. How are we doing this morning? I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. I pray that the presence of God go with us. Let's bow our head and pray. I pray that the presence of God go with us again this morning. Everywhere you will go, the presence of God go with you. Anywhere you are not meant to be, that the presence of God will lead you not to be there in the name of Jesus. I pray for grace over your life. I pray for masters over your life. I pray for the blessing of God to overtake you again this morning. I pray for signs and wonder for each and every one of you connected with this platform. I pray that the blood of Jesus begin to speak better things in your life, in your home, in your, in your marriages, in your health, and the lives of your children again this morning. I pray that you begin to experience the awesomeness of God in every area of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way this morning. I submit to you. I have nothing of my own. And I ask that you will flow through me. You will move through me. You will touch your people the way you have not touched them before. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Remember this evening, we have a special program every Thursday. Remember to get your Holy Communion ready and be part of the meeting. I want to also encourage each one that is hearing me tonight, uh, this morning, to invite at least two persons tonight, at least two persons tonight. Make sure you tell somebody about that program because God is going to use it for great deliverance in the lives of his people. Hallelujah. Today, again, I want to continue on the topic which I started yesterday, grow up. Aha, uh -huh. I say grow up. And I believe each and every one of us, we are working on growing up to the next level of our life. And I pray that God will grant you that grace in the name of Jesus. I said yesterday that there are areas of our life, different aspects of our life that we need to grow. Some it has to do in your prayer life. Some it has to do in your fasting life. Some it has to do in the area of forgiveness. You hold on grudges and you never let go. You never forgive. Some it has to be in the area of loving. Some it has to be in the area of studying the word of God. Some it has to be in the area of your giving. Some it has to be in the areas of your relationship. Each and every one of us will know areas of our life that we need to grow up and not act as a baby. And I pray for you 
as you are hearing this word daily, that this word will begin to grow your spiritual muscle to the level which you need to be in Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Go with me to the book of Galatians 4 and verse 1 as I read. I repeat again, Galatians 4 and verse 1 as I read. I mean that the hair, as long as he is a child, is no different from his name, though he is the owner of everything. I want you to note that scripture this morning. God wants you to grow up to enjoy everything that God has for you in the kingdom of God, so that when you go, when you get to heaven, you can say every benefit here on earth I've been able to enjoy, I've been able to, to enjoy and have. Here, it's possible for you to enjoy everything as a child of God. And this is why the scripture say, yes, as long as you behave like a child, you are not different from a slave. I say that again. As long as you behave as a child, you are not different from a slave. And I want to believe that we know who a slave is. A slave has no inheritance. A slave is just there forever. A slave has no relationship with the master. And I believe that God wants you to have a relationship with him so that everything that belongs to you may be given to you. The scripture also says, though he is the owner of everything, you see, as long as you remain a child, what belongs to you, you cannot receive. Can I say that again? As long as you remain a child, what belongs to you cannot be released in your hand. We have some mama, they are child. We have some fathers, they are child. And what belongs to you, you can't get it. The more you act like a child, the more things that belongs to you, you can't get. This is what the scripture is saying. It's not Pastor Anderson here that is saying it this morning. As long as you act as a child, what belongs to you, you cannot receive it. Can I pray for somebody this morning under the sound of my voice? The spirit of child, the spirit of babyhood, I remove it from your life this morning. And I pray that the grace and anointing for you to grow up come upon you in the name of Jesus. As long as you remain a child, you don't have access to your inheritance in the kingdom of God. And God wants us to grow so that we have access to the inheritance that Jesus died for on the cross of Calvary that may become yours as a child of God. So there are inheritance that we have as children of God. But the more you remain a baby, the more you remain a child, the more you remain in the same position, that which belongs to you, you cannot receive. Your Heavenly Father goal is, goals is for you to mature and develop the characteristic of Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. Your Heavenly Father goal is for you to mature and develop the characteristic of Jesus Christ. Many Christians grow older but never grow, grow up. Did you hear that? Many Christians, they grow older, but they never grow up. So they, you just grow in age, you grow in age, the days are coming, it's birthday today, birthday tomorrow, but you remain babies all your days. I pray for you again this morning, all the days of your life, you will not just grow older, but you will grow up in the things of God. Many Christians also remain in diapers. Diapers are meant for babies, but they remain in diapers. They remain in diapers because they fail to grow up. I pray for you again this morning. You will not remain in diapers. You will grow up in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm saying that again. You will grow up in the mighty name of Jesus. Spiritual growth is not automatic. It takes an intentional com commitment. What did I say? Spiritual growth is not automatic. It takes an intentional commitment. So you will make that intention to say, I want to grow. It's you that will make the choice. It's you that will make your choice. You must make a choice to grow. You must decide how to grow and you must make effort. It's three things. Let me go back again. You must make, uh, you must want to grow. You must decide to grow. You must make an effort to grow. Let me say it one more time. You must want to, you must want to grow. You must decide to grow. You must make an effort to grow. So it's not something that they force on you. You see, the reason why a lot of people have marital problem is because they fail to grow. If you have grown and you have matured, there are certain things that you will not take the way you are taking it now. There are certain things that you walk through instead of you being stuck in it. If you fail to grow, I, I say this to you, and I'm, I want you to believe what I'm saying. It will not only affect you, 
it affects people that surrounds you because you have failed to grow. If you fail to grow, do you know you will not be able to take your leadership role? You can't take your leadership role because every time you will want to behave like a baby, every time you want to fight back, every time any little things will get to you, every time any little thing you want to, you know, you want to be discouraged because you have not grown up. But if you are grown up, no matter what you are going through, no matter what you are in, no matter what you hear, you see maturity will be displayed. What did I say? Maturity will, dis will be displayed. Have you ever seen somebody that they've talked so much of and it's that person, let's say he's a pastor and it's time to preach. That person has that spiritual power, muscle, things are happening around, but he can still stand and he can still preach. That shows the level of the growth of that person. Can I say that again? That shows the level of the growth of the person. You see again, in marriage, there are people that will throw tantrums. There are things that will happen. And either the wife will say, I'm not going to talk to you, maybe for weeks, for months. It shows the level that you are. It shows that you have not grown. At times, people even fight with their children. They have misunderstanding. And for weeks, they are not talking with their children. For months, they are not talking with their children. And you are the mother. So you're a mother behaving like a baby. A father behaving like a baby. It shows the level of your growth. Your growth, you must want to grow. You must decide to grow. You must make an effort to say, no, 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 no. Because God will have shown you an aspect of your life, that areas of your life that you need to grow. So you will make that choice that, mm -mm, I'm not going to be this way again. You will make that choice. I'm not going to be in this level again. You will make that choice. I'm going to my next level. Can I pray for you? Your next level of growth, as you have heard this word, you will not just hear it, but you will go into your next level of growth in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to pray for you again. I say you will go, but you will go into the next level of growth. Do you know, you not growing up deprive you of everything that God has for you. According to the book of Galatians 4 and 1 that we have read this morning, I want you to meditate on that scripture. I want you to sit back. I want you to take that scripture again. I want you to just look through it. I want you to chew it. I want you to ponder on it. You not growing up again makes you behave like a snake. And a snake does not have an inheritance. You not growing up makes you not to have everything that God has planned for you. How many of you hearing the sound of my voice this morning? And you want everything that God has planned for you. One of the first decisions you must make is the decision of growth. What did I say? You make a decision of growth. And I say growth is intentional. You will say, I want to grow. It is not somebody that forces growth on you because you want to remain a baby. You want to wear diapers of the days of your life. There's no problem. But I'm here to announce to you, you deprive yourself of the inheritance that is meant for you as a child of God. Praise the Lord somebody. Let's look at the book of Ephesians 4 again. And that's 14 as I read from my version. And I repeat again, Ephesians 4 and verse 14. So that we may no longer be children. Did you see that? You are not meant to be children, toasted to and fro from the from toasted fro, to and fro by the waves and carried by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning and craftiness in deceitful scheme. You don't remain a baby. We are no longer a baby that you are toasted fro and fro. To and fro. You are like a waves of sea. Nobody can determine you know, what they see with you. Today you are cold, tomorrow you are hot. Tomorrow you are hot, tomorrow next, tomorrow you are cold. Today you warm up towards people, tomorrow they can't decide what they're going to meet with you. Tomorrow they are thinking, what's happening again? They just see you and you are, your face is so tight up and your face, you are not smiling to people again. It shows the level where you are that you have not grown up. Hallelujah. The Bible also encourages us that we must not be tossed here and there by the wind of what? By the wind and the waves of doctrine. Today you are Paul's disciple. Tomorrow you are Peter's disciple. Tomorrow you are Jesus' disciple. Tomorrow you are <laughs> tomorrow you are you are you are John's disciple. So every disciple, so the, everywhere, that's where you are. It shows that you are tossed here and there by the waves of the same. It, it shows that you don't have a particular place that they can, you can call a home. And it's only children that behave like that.
Children will see this, they jump into it. Children will see that, they jump into it. Children will see other people, they are jumping, they jump into their hand, they jump into their home, they jump into their car. So they are not, they are not rooted, they are not stable. So the spiritual is saying, part of what shows your maturity is when you are just toasted here and there. You are here today, you are here tomorrow, we don't see you again, we don't even know where you are. They can see you where they can see you there. So they are asking, where actually are you? Where actually do you belong? Hallelujah. But you know, as a child of God, nothing moves you in the presence of God. You are stable, you are growing. As you are hearing the word of God, you are not carried away by the doctrine of men. What did I say? You are not carried away by the doctrine of men. You are fully established as believer in the presence of God. As believer, you need to improve in the area of your life so that you don't remain in taking feeding bottle. You know what feeding bottle is. I believe we know what feeding bottle is because feeding bottle is what baby takes. Feeding bottle, a lot of people, when they rebook you here, you run away. A lot of people, when they ask you to do something and you are not doing it, you don't want to be part of it again. You throw tantrums. That's not you again. You don't, you close the door. Nobody can get to you again. You run away from that place and you are looking for another place to be part of it. You must mature from baby wood into adult wood. You must begin to behave like an adult, not like a baby. In Christ, remember, the same way we desire to grow is the same way we need to grow in Christ. We need to have Christ's characteristic in our life. We need to show some things that when a non-believer see us, they know that truly we are a child of God. Aha, they will need to show some things that when people see you, that they know that you are a child of God. Meaning that in spiritual matters, we have to grow. In spiritual things, you have to grow. God requires you to walk in the light of the word of God. And this is why we need the word of God. And that word of God becomes a signboard. That word of God becomes something that guides and directs us and leads us so that we can live our life according to the scripture, not according to our environment. Shout hallelujah, somebody. All the blessings are not just put in the Bible. They are meant for you. But listen, there are certain blessings that cannot come to you until you are mature. There are certain blessings that you cannot have until you are mature. And this is why your maturity is so important. I want you to take, for example, you have an estate. You have an estate and your estate worth maybe a billion because we have people that their estate worth a billion. And you have a child that that child is only seven years old. Yes, the child owns everything that you own as a father, as a mother. But do you know, everything that you hold will, it does not belong to, even by law of the land. Yes, it belongs to the child, but the child cannot activate all things that belongs to him until he or she got to a certain age. That child must get to the age of uh, maturity before the things that the father holds, it can be given to him. Also in Christendom, there are things that belongs to you as a child of God. You can't have it until you grow to that level. And you cannot have it. This is not saying that, Pastor, what are you saying this morning? It's the reality of life. Where you are now is not where you are meant to be. But here, because you have not grown, because you are still behaving like a baby, that is why you are eating crumb. If you will grow up spiritually, if you will grow up with your work with God, if you will grow up according to the word of God, you'll find out that you develop muscle not to eat crumbs again. There are certain things that comes to you. It will just come like that because now you are growing up. I want you to know this, that these are realities of the word of God. Until you grow up, there are certain things that you will not have. Until you grow up, you may struggle with it. You may struggle for it. You may pray 24-7. You may cry out to God and say, God, I need this. I need that. It's not going to happen because your part is the growth. And if you fail to grow, like I use the illustration that if your father has an estate and your father has a billionaire, he will not give those things to you because he knows that if he give it to you, you are going to squander it. Some of you will have been rich. Some of you will have been millionaires. Some of you will have been so wealthy. Do you know the reason why you have not been wealthy? because you would refuse to grow. And if you are not growing, God cannot commit into your hand what belongs to you because he knows you will act like a slave. 
A snake, when it has something, does not value it. A snake, when it has something, squanders it. A snake, when it has something, will not appreciate it. A snake, when it has something, it can just dump it somewhere. And God does not want you to dump the inheritance that is given to you as a child of God, just anywhere. So it guides you jealously and it's requiring from you that what? You must grow. Aha, you must grow. Aha, you must grow as a child of God. So all the blessing that is in the Bible can be yours as a child of God. Shout hallelujah. Do you know that nothing shapes your life more than committing to choose, more than the commitment that you choose to make? I want to say that again. I say nothing shapes your life more than the commitment you choose to make. Hallelujah. Whatever you are committed to do, you become in 10 or 15 years. And that is the truth. Whatever you commit to do now, maybe you are 20 years old, maybe you are 30 years old, add another 10 years, add another 15 years, you will see the result. It will be so clearing. If you are committed to the sleeping, all you will see in the next 15 years is the result of your sleeping. If you are committed to studying the word of God and acting on the word of God, all you will also re receive is the blessing and the benefit of the scripture in another 10 years, in another 15 years. So what you commit to now, what you commit to now, you will become it in another 10 years. What you commit to now, you will become it in another 15 years. If you look at your life, it shows what you are committed to. If you look at your life, you cannot go beyond your commitment. You cannot receive beyond your commitment. You cannot, you cannot have an inheritance beyond your commitment. It's like somebody that goes to work and you go to work, you go to work today, tomorrow you are not in work. And at the end of the month, you want to collect your wages and you are saying, but are you signed to pay me 1,000 pounds? They are not going to pay you 1,000 pounds. Why? They choose the day that you are there. And that is exactly what they will give back to you. They pay you accordingly. Listen to me. It's the same thing in the kingdom of God. What you put in is what you get back. What your commitment, your commitment to study, your commitment to acting and believe, believe in the word of God, your commitment in working according to the word of God is the result that you have right now in your hand. If you have not committed to anything in your life, you cannot have anything. That's the, that's the truth. If you are not committed to the things of God, if you are not committed to the word of God, you can't have the greater result than what you, what you are putting. And this is the truth to every one of us. You know, at times we see some people reaping the reward of their labor and we are so envious of them. We see some people reaping the reward of their labor and we say, ah, this person just bought this new car. This person, these things are, are going fast. This person, nah, nah, nah. no, what you sow is what you reap. And that is scriptural. Aha, uh -huh. it's scriptural. What you put in is what you get back. If you put in your spiritual growth, to grow and you are studying the word of God, not just studying the word of God, you are committed to doing what the word of God says. There's no how your life will not change. There's no how you will not have answers to your prayer. Hallelujah. Do you know that your spiritual growth is a collaboration effort between you and the Holy Spirit? I say it again. Your spiritual growth is the collaboration effort between you and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit work in you, not just for you. Holy Spirit work in you. You see, the moment you release yourself in the hands of the Holy Spirit, and you are saying, Holy Spirit, take this aspect of my life. And that is why we are giving the helper. It's like a woman becoming an helper to a man. If you fail in your responsibility of a wife, you are failed woefully because there's responsibility that God has given to us as a woman. You are meant to be the helper of that man because there are areas of the life of the man that the man on his own will not be able to shape together. It was God that said, let me give you an helper. And the Holy Spirit also is compared to that helper in our life that we are, uh, is meant to help us on a daily basis to shape us up, to cleanse us, to help us, to convict us of the word of truth. So if you fail to surrender in the hands of the Holy Spirit, means it's just there. You are, it's just there. He's not doing anything. Your spiritual growth, again, I said it's a collaboration effort between you and the Holy Spirit. You are to work with the Holy Spirit. 
You are to surrender in the hands of the Holy Spirit. You are to say, Holy Spirit, I'm still lying. You are to say, Holy Spirit, I'm still fornicating. You are to say, Holy Spirit, I'm still stealing. You are to say, Holy Spirit, my prayer life is tall. You are to say, the Holy Spirit, I struggle to give. You are to say, Holy Spirit, I want to pray and I cannot pray. You are to say, Holy Spirit, I want to fast and it's difficult for me to fast. You are to say, Holy Spirit, people are saying, I'm so proud. And this aspect of my life, I want you to help me. Remember, I said, the spiritual growth is a collaboration effort between you and the Holy Spirit. Between you and the Holy Spirit. Shout hallelujah, somebody. You may not see the picture, but don't worry. At least you can hear my voice. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah, somebody. So the Holy Spirit helps you. Helps you because it's your helper. Jesus said, I will give you an helper. I will give you an helper that will show you all things and will teach you all things. So the Holy Spirit is the helper to help you to grow. On your own, you cannot grow. On your own, you can struggle. On your own, you can make effort. On your own, you can make decisions. And you find out that it's not happening. And this is why a lot of time, some people will say some things. I want to do this. I want to do that. They can't do it because the Holy Spirit is not there to help them to achieve that which they said they want to achieve. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, you'll find out that which you say you want to do, it becomes easy because the Holy Spirit is the one that will empower you. I want to believe you are hearing my voice. If you are hearing my voice, just put it on the platform. I may not see, but the media will be able to see that you are hearing my voice. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Let's shout hallelujah, somebody. God is going to give us victory over this in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's go on. The Holy Spirit, in your own efforts to grow, in your own effort, when you make up your mind, that I don't want to be a baby. I don't want to act as a baby. I want to grow up. Remember the book of Galatians 4 and verse 1. said there are certain blessing that is yours as a child of God. You can't get it. It's not a cause. You cannot get it except you grow up. Except you, you make up your mind that I don't want to remain a baby. As long as you remain a baby, you cannot have it. I want to say it. You cannot have it. You can pray until you get green. You can pray until you get purple. You can pray and people pour oil on you. But you must make a decision to grow. And this is why I'm speaking to us again this morning. So our prayer time will not be a wasted time. If you fail to grow on your own, and certain things you are asking, remember the book of Galatians 4 and verse 1, you cannot receive it. It is not me that says it, because as long as you remain a slave, there are certain things that cannot be yours. As long that you remain, that say, you say to yourself, I don't want to grow. What are they talking about? It's my life. You cannot receive certain things that is yours as a child of God. So that thing is just kept it's kept in the safe. It's just kept there. And listen, you may die without having it. Can I pray for you this morning? May you not die without receiving your inheritance as a child of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I say that again? Can I pray for you? I say, may you not die without receiving your inheritance as a child of God. And this is why as a child of God, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to the aspect of your life that is holding back your inheritance. Can I say that again? Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to the aspect of your life. Not what I'm saying. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to the aspect of your life that you need to grow. Now ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to the aspect of your life that is hindering you from receiving your inheritance. You see many a times, People say it's the devil. It's not the devil. What did I say? The devil, the devil work is just minimal in our life. Aha. It's minimal in our life. If you stand your right as a child of God, if you grow up and you walk in the path of righteousness, I want to assure you that hundred percent you will have that which you are believing God for. I'm not saying the devil is not uh, is not bad. I'm not saying the devil is not the accuser of believer. But I'm saying if you have the right standing with God, if you are mature and you are growing as a child of God, because the word of God is yea and amen. God does not lie. And whatever I put in your in his word, hear me and hear me very well again this morning. It's something that is already settled, not something that will settle. So as you grow up, the inheritance that you need as a child of God is released into your hand, even without you struggling for it. Shout hallelujah. The same way that we put whatever is an inheritance for the heir in an estate. And when it's time for that child 
they remove it from the estate, it becomes the owner. He has rights to it. He can do whatever he wants to it. He will want, uh, he can do whatever he wants with it. Now, because he has matured. Now, because that thing, there is a set date. At the set date, maybe there's 21 years old, maybe at 18 years old, they release that estate into his hand. I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice. The estate that belongs to you, the inheritance that belongs to you, receive it this morning in the name of Jesus. Receive it this morning as you make commitment to grow in the name of Jesus. Let's look at one more scripture before we go and pray again this morning. Philippians 2 and verse 12. And I'm going to read. I say that again. Philippians 2 and verse 12. Aha. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in the present, but much more in my absence, work out. What did I say? Work out. So this morning, we are working out. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Did you see that? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Don't stop at the point of giving your life to Christ. Work it out. Work it out. Work out your spiritual muscle. Grow your spiritual muscle. Grow your spiritual life. Work out your salvation with, with fear and tremble. Hallelujah. We all have a new life in Christ. You have to develop it with fear and trembling. Your new life in Christ, develop it with fear and tremble. Take your spiritual growth seriously. What did I say? Take your spiritual growth seriously. Change always. First start from your mind. What did I say? Change always start from your mind. There must be a spiritual renewal of your thought. And that's how you grow. Hallelujah. To be like Christ, you must develop Christ's mind. To be like Christ, you must develop Christ's mind. Hallelujah. Today, many assume that spiritual maturity is measured by the amount of biblical information you have. No, 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 no. It's not measured. You see, some people will tell you the Greek meaning of this. They will tell you the Hebrew meaning of this. They will tell you that in this version, this is what is there. In that version, that is what is there. But they are not growing. It's just knowledge. It's not reflecting in the way that you are walking. You cannot say the Greek and the meaning of all. And your life is not affected by the meaning of the words that you are giving to us. You cannot say, oh, I did this, I did that, I did that. And yet you are, remain, you are remaining a baby. It's more than that. And that's what I'm saying. That today, many measure their spiritual maturity. They measure it about, uh, 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 they measure by amount of biblical information that they have. It's more than that. It's more than that. It's not about in, in, information. It's about transformation. What did I say? It's not about the information you have about the scripture. It's about transformation. You cannot have the information that does not transform you. What is the point of you having information that does not bring any transformation to your life? What is the point of you having information that does not help you to grow? What is the point of you having information that you yourself cannot use as a mirror to your life to go to another level? What is the point of you having information, information information that is only knowledge and it's not helping you to grow your spiritual knowledge it's a wasted time what did i say information that does not help you to transform your life that does not help you to your next level is a wasted of time it's like you having something and you don't know you have it a lot of believers have a lot and they don't know they have it. Yes, you can be a teacher. Yes, you can be preaching. But your life is not is not is not in line with what you are preaching. Yes, I know that our life is in progress and we are work in progress. But at the same time, it's something that you make a commitment of that I want to change. I want to transform. And as we do that, the Lord will help you. Knowledge is one measure of maturity. It's just one measure. It's one measure. It's one measure. Hallelujah. Is one measure. The other measure is what you display on a daily basis. What did I say? The other measure is what you display on a daily basis. Do you still display babyhood on a daily basis? Your maturity includes conduct and character. And that is the truth. Our maturity includes your conduct and your character. My maturity includes my conduct and my character. You see, there are some Christians, they just want to come to God and quickly receive something and go. They just want it. They say to God, give me, give me, give me, give me. 
Give me, give me, give me, give me. So they just want to have it. You see, there are certain things that God will not release in your hand because you have not matured. Did you just hear me? Christianity is not a religion, but a relationship and a lifestyle. Christianity is not a religion, a relationship and a lifestyle. If I may ask you before we go and read Psalm 91 again this morning, what is your relationship with God? What is your relationship with God? If I may ask you your lifestyle, are you acting as a believer or are you acting as an unbeliever? Hallelujah. Do you know that thinking of others is an evidence of maturity? Not having a selfish thought. Stay in the place of prayer for other people. Helping other people. The same way the Holy Spirit is there to help you. Do you know these are evidence of maturity? Forgiving other people. Loving other people. Caring for other people. Carrying the burdens of other people. Do you know these are the evidence of maturity for us as children of God? I pray grace again for you this morning. That all these words that we are hearing will be able to receive and walk according to the word. Remember, there are inheritance that are yours as a child of God, but you cannot have it until you mature. You cannot have it because you behave like a child. And as long as you are behaving like a child, the Bible makes us to understand that you are a slave and things that are yours cannot become yours. I pray for you again this morning. Things that are yours, things that you are qualified for, that you have been deprived of, for a long time. This morning, may the Lord open the door for you so that you can get into your inheritance, not just get into your inheritance, that you will be able to receive those inheritance in Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. May the God by himself minister grace to you. May God by himself open your ears. May God by himself give you out of understanding. May God by himself give you reason that you'll be committed to grow. May God by himself Whisper to your heart the importance of growth so that you can receive that which is yours as a child of God. It's my prayer that this word will take you to another level. It's my prayer that this word will open doors for you. It's my prayer that this word will not just be information, but will be what, what will lead to your transformation in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. Let's go to the book of Psalm 91 as we read it together again this morning. My refuge and my fortress. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, we abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snares of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his opinion. And under his wind, you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terrors of night, nor the arrows that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalls in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the most high. Who is my refuge? No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent, for it will command his angels concerning you to guide you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on a lion and the adder, and the young lion and the serpent, and you will trample under your feet. Because he holds fast to me in law, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want you to lift up your voice again this morning. I want you to begin to decree and declare. I want you to begin to declare. I will not be tossed for to and fro by waves and carried about by winds of doctrine of woman cunning and craftiness. Say, I will not be toasted to and fro, to and fro. I will remain in the Lord. The winds of the world will not carry me. The winds of the world 
will not carry me. The wings of the world will not carry me. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to talk to your father. The wings of the world will not carry me. The wings of the world will not carry me. The wings of the world will not carry me. I will not be toasted, fall to and pro by the ways of by the ways of the enemy. I will not be carried to and pro. I will not be carried to and pro. I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to lift up my voice. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to talk to your father. Begin to talk to your father. I want you to decree and declare that father in the name of Jesus, I want you to help me to take my spiritual life more seriously. I want to take my spiritual life more seriously. I want you to go ahead and begin to declare that. I want to take my spiritual life more seriously. I want to take my spiritual life more seriously. Look, from today, I make a commitment to take my spiritual life more seriously, more seriously. I want you to lift up your voice as many that are making that commitment. This morning again, you find out that things begin to change in your life. Your life begins to change. There are certain things that you don't have that we just have just like that. I want you to lift up your voice. Help me, O oh God, to make commitment today to take my spiritual life more seriously, my story life more seriously, my prayer life more seriously, my fasting life more seriously, my acting on the word of God more seriously. I want you to go ahead. 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 Just lift up your voice. Father, help me today. Father, help me today. Father, help me today. Help me to take my spiritual life more seriously from this hour, from this hour, from this hour, from this hour, from this hour. Help me, O oh God to take my spiritual life more seriously. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice, lift up your voice and begin to talk to your father as I make this commitment today. Lord, I ask you will help me. Lord, I ask you will help me. Lord, I ask you will help me. Lord, I have you will help me. You will help me. You will help me. You will help me. I'm speaking to some of you this morning. The Lord is saying to you, as you renew your commitment, and as you follow through those things you have been believing for, those things you have been crying for, those things you have been fasting for, he said, with ease, you will receive it. He said, with ease, it will come to you. He said, the table will turn around to your table. As you make this commitment today, lift up your voice. And now go to Shigali Brogaga, Regege de Bosha, Inele Katuli Brogaga, Libra Dagadaga, Libra Dagadaga, Enege de Boshigan de Libra. I want you to lift up your voice magando kaluske libraga enege de boshiga libraga enagada baso kalibraga magande gelebaga ele brogagade ele brogagade ele brogagade magele boshiga de garoske negene magarosha enagaroshiga gabagada ele brogagadaga ele brogagada magagada gelebo the lord asked me to tell somebody he said today he wiped away your tears he said today it changed your story. He said, if look at your commitment and today is blessing the work of your hand for you to go forward. So I join my faith with the word of God concerning you. I declare you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let this one go forward. As you are spoken again this morning, go forward. That sister, go forward. I say go forward. As the Lord has seen your commitment and is speaking to your life this morning, whatever all tell you your life is removed from you. So this morning, you are going forward. You are going forward. You are going forward. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to declare, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ, not the mind of the baby. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ, not the mind of your baby. I have from today the mind of Christ, 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 I want you to begin to declare that, that you have the mind of Christ, you have the mind of Christ, you have the mind of Christ, I want you to lift up your voice and cry out uh, that I have the mind of Christ from today, I'm no more a baby, I have the mind of Christ, I have a mature mind, I want you to say it, 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 I have the mind of Christ, I have the mind of Christ, I have the mind of Christ, I have a 
mind to Christ. I want you to press on. I want you to decree. I want you to declare that you have the mind of Christ. 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 I want you to say it again and again that you have the mind of Christ. Reba siga libro gagada mangele gede bosha in the karua sika libra gada. The Lord asked me to tell somebody there is a person on the way for you from your auntie. The Lord asked me to tell you not to use what is inside of it. He said, don't use it. He said, don't use it. He said, don't use it. It's a parcel, and it's been said. In Nano Tuka Libroga, you have been communicating with your auntie, and the Lord is warning you. He said, don't use those items that is sent to you. Magali Shika, Libroga Gadabosha, Eke Libroga Gadabosha, Mangali Katotobo Shige Libra Gada, Regege de Bagarosha, Inde Lakoto Libraga, Eke Talos Kelia, Magaro Shigalia, Roba Gadagosha, and the Karabo Shigali Bragada. I'm speaking to somebody else. They send anointing oil. They call it anointing oil. The Lord asked me to tell you not to use it. He said, don't use it. He said, don't touch it. In a keto libro gaga, ragada o shaga, in a guto libro gagada, magagado shiga libra, in a gada o sha, in the kahu shiga libraga. I have the mind of Christ. I want you to declare it again. I have the mind of Christ. Magada gada, libro gagada, magede gedo sha, maganda kahu shiga libraga. The Lord asked me to tell somebody they lied against you about two years ago. It was so painful for you. The Lord said, those who lie against you, this is the time for me to reward them. And this is the time for me to promote you. He said, this is the time for you to enjoy. The Lord asked me to plead for mercy. For some of you again this morning. He said, There are certain things that you are saying. There are certain people that you have tortured, that you are not meant to torture with your mouth. I plead for mercy. I plead for mercy. I plead for mercy. Nega gaga daga, le bro gaga daga, le bro gaga gaga, rege gadosha, maganda gaga gaga. He said those things that you have said about those people has opened the door to death. Nega naga duko tuli bro gaga, rege gaga dosha, magaka gaga, re bro gaga gaga. He said you joined us together with certain people, and while you were speaking, I was present. You didn't know that those people you are talking about, they are not people you touch with your mouth. Hey, Kalanda to Kalibraga, Magane Ketosha, Libroga Gadagada, Lord, I plead for mercy. Hey, Katuka Luske, Libroga, I plead for mercy, Negagadosha, I plead for mercy, 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 and can to Kulibroga, Regege no Kutu di Braga Dagada, Regege da Basu Kalibraga, Ena Katoli Braga, Rekago Shiga Libraga, Regege, Magagaga, I want you to decree and declare that Father, I abide under the shadow of your wing. Negago Shiga Libra, those of you that I'm talking about, I want you also to repent and cry out for forgiveness. Ekalu Kuto Libra, Neganda Kutolia, Magagadusha, Lebro Gagadogosha, Enekoto Libro Gagadosha, Maganda Gado Koto Libra Gaga, Elebro Gagaga, Legra Gado Shiga Libraga, Magagadaga. Lord, I plead your mercy for those people. I plead your mercy, Lord. 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 Nega gagaga, le broga geto, shiga le broga, le broga gada, le kando kalia, roba gande ke lukske le bosha, le kento kali broga gaga, regegegegege, regegegegege. I plead for your mercy. 
as I stand in the gap, Robo Shanda, in a koto di bragada, I ask so God, makata kata, that the wings of your hands will cover your people because of your mercy, because of your mercy, because of your mercy, because of your mercy. Nagakato shiga di bragada, regegegege, regegegege, magano koto di braga, and the Korea sick and the kaya, and the kedebo shika di braga, regegegegege. Command your angels not to watch over this people. Bika neke to kalia. Riba kato di brogaga. Rekegegegege. Le brogegegege. Le brogegegege. Rakagagada. Le brogagato shikadaba. Ne kakakaka. Nakuri brogada. I want you to decree right now. As you begin to anoint yourself. Say, Father, rescue me. Rescue me, darling. Nagagagagaga. Nagano koto di brogagada. I want you to cry out for rescue. I want you to cry out for rescue, rescue my son, rescue my daughter, rescue my son, rescue my daughter, Nekakadosha, Makuria, the Kotaka, Muske, the Progagada, Rike, the Bokoto, the Braga, the Progagada, the Progagada, the Progagada, I want you to cry out, Magane, Soka, the Braga, the Progagadosha, in the Nenobo, Chica, the Braga, I want you to cry out for rescue this hour, I want you to cry out for rescue this hour, in Nakatu, the Progaga, the Progagadosha, Magadakoto Shigalebra, the Lord will rescue your son from the ends of the Ekanagada, from the ends of the angel of death. The Lord will Ekanaka to Kanibaga will rescue your daughter. I want you to cry out for rescue. Say, rescue me. Say, rescue me. Say, rescue me. Say, rescue me. Rescue my son. Rescue my daughter. And Nakoto Libruga, Libruga Gagagaga, Maguria Sikendo Libra, Makadao Shikalibra. You may not see see the picture, but you can hear my voice. I just want you to key into what I'm saying. Right now, by the power of the blood of Jesus, we arrest the angel of death. 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 By the power of the blood, by the power of the name of Jesus, we arrest her. We arrest her. We arrest her. We arrest her. Magande geli bro gagado shigali bro gagada re gagagagaga. Let the anointing of God speak this morning. Oh Jesus, you are the covenant keeping God. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, Magarusi gadi broga, nagagagaga, oh lebagarabosh. I release the blood. I release the blood. I release the blood. I release the blood. I say covering over your life. I release the blood. I say covering over your son. I release the blood. I say covering over your daughter. I release the blood. I stand in the gap. I release the blood. I rescue Anakotoya by the power in the name of Jesus from danger. We rescue your children from accident. We rescue your children from incident. We rescue your children from the angel of death. We rescue Lord Danakato Shiga, Lebroka Gagadosha, Regegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegeg
Let your mercy, 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 let your mercy speak. Oh Jesus, arise and let the enemies scatter. Arise. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we magnify you. What a awesome God we have. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. This evening, I don't want you to miss these sessions. This evening, this evening. This evening, this evening, there are things that the Lord is still showing me, but because of time, I have to honor your time. And very soon, we will move this time again, add a few minutes, so we will allow the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do in our midst. Quickly, before we go, out of the substance that God has given to you again this hour, I want you to give to God. This evening, remember your only communion, your only communion, your only communion, your holy communion. Issues that I've mentioned, if you are part of it, please wait on God until any hour you can wait, or minutes you can wait on God, or seconds you can wait on God today. Don't just go ahead and eat your breakfast. Hallelujah. Give it time. You can wait up to 12, you can wait to 3, you can wait to 6 until we have a program in the evening. Make sure you give out of the substance that God has given to you. Tonight is going to be power of prayer, you and the nation. It's my prayer that you will be made a praise in the head in the name of Jesus. Please do me a favor. Invite at least three persons tonight. At least three persons tonight. And come with your holy communion. And with a heart ready to receive what God is about to do in your life. It is well with you. Spread the good news of Jesus Christ. What he's doing in our midst is faithful and forever he will be faithful. God has not changed his address. He will not start with you. I want you to know that I love you. And I love you, and I love you. And because I love you, Jesus also loves you. God bless you. Have a good morning. Enjoy everything that is in this day. And enjoy your inheritance as a child of God. God bless you. Have a nice day.